There seems to be a persistent myth that Stalin took the program of Trotsky in the left opposition when he made his break with the NEP in the late 20s. This incorrect history is very common. It is even in George Orwell's Animal Farm, which given in at least most American high schools it is required reading, it might be where people get this idea from. You may remember it as the bit where the Stalin pig pisses on the plans for the windmill, then ends up using them later, and there's even a line about the Stalin pig having his propaganda pig announce who is the one who was for it all along. This is supposed to represent the economic debates, but it is wrong, and in general it turns out history is a bit more complicated than can be explained with a windmill and pig piss. But this idea is not limited to an allegorical novella taught in high schools as anti-communist propaganda. This actually became a pretty prominent interpretation of events amongst Western academic histories. Stephen F. Cohen points this out in Bolshevism and Stalinism, an essay in Robert C. Tucker's Stalinism, Essays and Historical Interpretation. The programmatic debates of the 1920s are treated largely as an extension of and in terms of the Trotsky-Stalin rivalry, or perpetuating the fictional misnomers of the period, permanent revolution, and socialism in one country. Trotsky and the left opposition are said to have been anti nep and embryonically Stalinist, the progenitors of almost every major item in the political program that Stalin later carried out. So it's then said to have stolen or adapted Trotsky's economic policies in 1929, having portrayed a basic affinity between Trotsky's plan and Stalin's actions. These secondary interpretations suggest at least a significant continuity between Stalinism and Bolshevik thinking in the 1920s, and underlie the general interpretation of NEP. They are, however, factually incorrect. This is a pretty common view on the left. Like, seriously, look up Trotsky and NEP, and you can find people arguing about it on Twitter. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this, but the left seems so reliant on like 70-year-old histographies on the Soviet Union and constantly repeat these older ideas. It also touches on the fact that the debates of the 1920s weren't permanent revolution versus socialism in one country. That is a really bad and accurate oversimplification, which I'm not going to get in fully here, but you should see a bit of why it is wrong by the end of this. So why exactly is this theory wrong? Well, Stalin's ending of the NEP could not have been taken from Trotsky, as Trotsky was a proponent of the NEP and even one of the first to propose it. We can see Trotsky states this in My Life and The New Course, that in February of 1920, that he proposed very similar policies to what would become the NEP. But just because Trotsky said this, and that's sort of in his memoirs in an article from 1923, does not mean that we can trust it. Now, I don't have the full transcript of the 10th Congress, but we can see from two historians that Trotsky at this Congress made a point of mentioning that he did propose this, and no one challenged that or said it was wrong. From Moshe Leuven's Political Undercurrents in Soviet Economic Debates, Trotsky, who adopted wholeheartedly the NEP at its inception. Then, from a note at the bottom of the page, Trotsky could afford to endorse the NEP wholeheartedly because he too had some previous positions to call back on. He was, in fact, the first to have advocated NEP-like changes as early as February 1920, but his proposals were then rejected by the Central Committee. Trotsky then turned to his plan of statization of the trade unions, but this too was rejected by Lenin, who was soon to adopt the NEP. On this, both leaders agreed. And from E.H. Kars, volume 2 of his A History of Soviet Russia, in February 1920, before the Ninth Party Congress, at a moment when the Civil War already seemed over, Trotsky had proposed in the Politburo to replace the requisitioning of surpluses by a tax in kind, calculated on a percentage of production, and to put the exchange of goods with the peasantry on an individual rather than collective basis. But he had been opposed by Lenin and only obtained four of the 15 votes. Now, at the opening of the archives, we did find it was not Trotsky to be the first person to bring up a replacement of grain requisitions with a tax, permit a certain level of trade. Around the same time, but unknown to Trotsky, Yuri Larin, just a week or two prior, proposed something similar, which was supported by Rykov, but was opposed by Lenin. Now, none of this was a new idea. Before the Civil War broke out, there was talk of a taxation and trade with the peasantry, but this never really took off. Of course, too, we don't even really have to trust Trotsky or historians that Trotsky supported the NEP essentially out of the gate. In Lenin's To the Russian Colony in North America, Lenin says to anyone questioning the NEP, I would refer to the speeches of Comrade Trotsky and my own at the 4th Congress of the Communist International. Trotsky's speech in question was delivered at Session 10 on Tuesday the 14th of November of 1922 at 6.15pm. A summary can be found on Marxist.org under the title, The Economic Situation of Soviet Russia, From the Standpoint of Socialist Revolution. And Lenin's is Session 8 on Monday 13th of November of 1922 at 11.40am. This speech was Lenin's first public one following a stroke in May 1922. It is rather short compared to Trotsky's on the question. So we have Lenin saying that Trotsky's speech was a defense of the NEP and referred people to it.
But you might say, well, Trotsky initially was for it, but him and the left opposition became opponents of it after Lenin's death. But this is simply not true either. Pulling from Cohen's article again, Trotsky's actual economic proposals in the 1920s were based on the NEP and its continuation. He urged greater attention to heavy industry and planning earlier than did Bukharin, and he worried more about the village Kulak, but his remedies were moderate, market-orientated, or as the expression went, NEPist. Like Bukharin, he was a reformist in economic policy, looking towards the evolution of NEP Russia towards industrialism and socialism. Now, two quotes from Moshe Leuven's Political Undercurrents in Soviet Economic Debates. They envisaged the continuation of the NEP and therefore logically enough stated that although they intended to exercise greater control over the Kula and private entrepreneurs, to tax them more efficiently and to promote more collectivization in the countryside, liquidation of kulaks and of private sectors or, or a large-scale administrative drive against peasants was also out of the question. In propaganda texts, the majority spokesmen accused the left of planning to liquidate the NEP to oppress the peasantry, to raise prices, and to lower the standard of living and other sins. But the latter, no doubt, sincerely reassured that it favored the NEP, did not intend to expropriate the property of the kulaks, nor intended that of any of the private entrepreneurs and that of, in fact, even welcome some growth of these elements, provided the growth of the socialist sector, mainly industrial, was constantly assured. They opposed using the GPU against the private sectors. So, in terms of economic thinking, the left argued for development of the industrial sector and that collectivization had to follow the development of the industrial sector, and this should be done with the peasants' consent, and that even the agricultural industry could grow, so as long as industry was growing faster and could keep up to supply them with goods to keep their relationship intact. So we can see the idea that Trotsky rejected the NEP is false. I also see ideas that Trotsky was against development of the Soviet economy, but it is really the opposite. Trotsky represented the faction calling for industrialization and a focus on economic development. This is in opposition to Bukharin's position of industrialization at a snail's pace. Another thing that is not often enough pointed out, Stalin was not the leading figure opposed to Trotsky on economics. That was Bukharin. Stalin's public policies on industry, agriculture, and planning were Bukharin's, that is, pro-NEP, moderate, evolutionary. This was the cement of the stalin bukharin duumvirate that made official policy and led the party majority against the left oppositionists until early 1928. Though, in private, Stalin would often show more of a disagreement with Bukharin. In June of the same year, he firmly declared behind the scenes that Bukharin's slogan, Enrich Yourselves, which he had addressed to all peasants, was not our slogan and incorrect. When Stalin ended the NEP, he was not stealing anyone's economic plans, not his former ally of Bukharin, nor his opponent Trotsky. Stalin created his own new policy. Regardless if you think it was justified or not, it was a break from the previous Bolshevik thinking. From Cohen again, Stalin's new policies of 1929 through 33, the Great Change, were a radical departure from Bolshevik programmatic thinking. No Bolshevik leader or faction had ever advocated akin to imposed collectivization or the liquidation of the kulaks, breakneck heavy industrialization. Now, I really could have just used Cohen's whole essay because he essentially makes the same argument, but given it is from one guy, that would make it easier for some people to dismiss. Plus, I think the quotes from Lenin aid this. Something else I want to mention, but a sort of appeal not to trust memoirs, I think this is maybe another source of this myth. Harry Haywood actually says Trotsky attacked the net from the start in his memoirs, when this is really just flat out wrong. I think it is fine and even good to read books like this, but they shouldn't be your only source on things. In this video, I didn't take Trotsky at his word in recalling the history. I went and verified that claim with more than one historian. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video, and it helps you understand some of the positions of the figures of the 1920s Soviet economic debates. I have a much longer video showing Bukharin's positions during this period, coming to sometime soon. Hopefully after my next video I'll be done with my break from longer videos and I'll release some bigger history content that I've been working on this year.